Welcome to Now We're Getting Somewhere. I'm Katie, and I'm a certified life coach, but I've also been a management consultant at McKinsey and a product manager at a tech startup. In other words, I know what it feels like to have a life that looks pretty good on paper, but doesn't feel as good as I want it to. I help my professional clients develop lives that are more meaningful, happy, and also more successful. And I want to share the same practical insights with you. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Today, I am going to answer another question from a newsletter subscriber. I've just been really enjoying it. I feel like it invites me to tackle some different topics in some different ways than I do when I'm just coming up with topics on my own. So today's newsletter subscriber question is from Camilla. It's a question about charting a new path after a divorce, but also I think it's really a a much broader question about how do we figure out our next steps in any season of our lives, about how do we kind of balance our future needs with our current needs. And I think that applies to so many folks I've worked with in all kinds of seasons of our lives, and I bet it applies to a lot of you as well. So here's Camilla's question summary. She says, I've just gotten divorced and I have not worked for some time while we relocated abroad and tried for a family. I have to get back to work, but I'm scared and I worry about how to communicate my career gap. And then she gives some more details. She says, hi, Katie, huge fan here. My question is about having to restart life after a divorce. My husband was the breadwinner, and I feel this pressure to go back to a tech job for a high income when I really want to embrace this moment and shift direction. I just don't know to what. I've been in survival mode during the divorce and fear I will be able to look after myself in this financial climate. In my 20s, I was hugely ambitious financially, but I just don't have the same drive now. Multiple miscarriages and burnout from divorce slash pandemic. How do I assess and make good decisions for my future? So first of all, Camilla, I just want to say thank you so much for writing in. I am so honored to have a fan, much less a big fan. And even more importantly, I just want to say that my heart really goes out to you right now. It sounds like the past few years must have been incredibly difficult for you between multiple miscarriages, oh my goodness, and a divorce and living abroad. And I imagine that, you know, if you were living abroad during the miscarriages and the divorce, you might not have had as many friends and family around you for support when you were going through these really tough things. And then it sounds like you also, you know, left your job in this process to live abroad and you had a vision probably for how your life and career was going to go. It sounds like perhaps for a while you were not planning to work. Maybe you wanted to focus on your family for that time, on the children you wanted to have. And now it sounds like life, at least in this season, is going very differently than you had expected. And that must also just be so painful. So I want to answer your question. And I I really sat with and read a bunch of times and really sat with sort of what your question was. Because on one hand, you wrote in your question summary, the high-level summary, that your question was, you know, I have to get back to work, but I'm scared and I worry about how to communicate my career gap. And look, I can coach on that. I definitely talk to clients all the time about how to talk in interviews about their experiences or about, you know, how to, about things like taking time off of work. But as I really sat with your question, I felt like it was actually deeper than that. So to me, in the question details, when you said, I feel this pressure to have to go back to a tech job for a high income when I really want to embrace this moment and shift direction. And you also said, how do I assess and make good decisions for my future? My sense was that those kinds of statements were really at the heart of this question. Obviously, I don't have you in front of me, so I can't probe the same way you would if you're my client. I was really sitting with you. But that was my sense of sort of the heart of this question, because I don't think you'd be asking, how do I assess and make good decisions for my future if it didn't feel like your future needs were in some way in conflict with your current needs? So on one hand, and I'm really trying to sit deeply with what you're saying, but on one hand, my sense is you seem to imply that here in the present, there are certain things that you want. It sounds like maybe some rest because you mentioned that you're coming out of survival mode. You mentioned that you experienced burnout from the divorce and the pandemic. Um, so there seems to be maybe be like a rest component. It also sounds like you're maybe wanting to shift direction from your previous work in tech, that you feel a different level of financial ambition than you felt before. So there's like a 
a desire to shift, but you also say you don't totally know what you want to shift to professionally. And of course, that can take a little bit of time and it can require slowing down a little bit, you know, as we kind of figure out those next steps. And sometimes, though not always, but sometimes if we want to shift direction, it can involve making a bit less money than before, at least for a while, as we kind of like get ramped up in whatever the newer thing that we want to do next is you know, because maybe we have less seniority than we had before because it's a new thing. So it sounds like on one hand, you have desires for those kinds of things, for rest, for redirecting yourself, for building something new. But it also sounds like there's a part of you that's very concerned that listening to those desires to slow down, to transition professionally, will jeopardize your future and especially your financial future. You mentioned that a few times. So I want to use today's podcast to speak to that dynamic. How do we make decisions when what we want now and what we want in the future seems to be in conflict? This is something that is super common. So many of my clients come to me with this kind of core issue, though the details are always different, but this kind of same core theme. So today, Camilla, I just want to tell you and everyone listening to this podcast three things that I often tell clients in situations just like this. And I will say, just because I, I, it's hard for me to not be comprehensive. As I read through your question, there was a little whiff to me of, you know, you literally said, like, I'm not sure what I want to do next. I'm not going to speak to that question on this particular podcast, because partially because I've spoken about it a bunch before and partially because I don't want this podcast to be too epic. But if you do want some help on that, check out episode 38 of my podcast, which I think is called When Nothing is Wrong But, and episode 17 of the podcast, which is is just called a, A Compass Instruction Manual. I'll link to both of those in the show notes. Um, and I hope that I'm interpreting your question correctly, Camilla. My apologies if not. Obviously, I'm I'm doing my best to kind of read between the lines and sit with where it feels like the emotional heart of this is. And please know that everything I'm going to say here is just done with so much boundless caring and compassion for you for all that you're going through. It must be so, so hard for you to be coming out of this really tough season and figuring out what's next. So from my heart to yours, three suggestions to keep in mind about balancing your need for your needs for the future versus your needs in the present. So the first thing I want to tell you is from my heart to yours, I do not believe that your present desires are infinite. Or another way of saying that would be your present desires are not infinite. The reason I want to start here is that my sense from reading your question was, you know, here is somebody who might be a little bit afraid of the magnitude of our her present desires. It felt like you, maybe you were somebody who, you know, as I said, is like craving in the present rest and grieving and having a little bit of space to feel overwhelmed as you kind of slowly reorient yourself. I think what can feel really scary in times like these, and I felt it myself, and I know so many of my clients have, is that those desires, they can feel so big. It can feel like we will never stop feeling that way, especially if we are folks who we know how to be smart. We know how to be ambitious. We know how to <laughs> run that financial model for the growth of our 401k. If you're a person like this, you might be thinking, yeah, fine, I don't want to rest, but also I need to make some money. I need to be able to look after myself. How the heck am I going to do that when I don't seem to have the same drive as I used to when it seems like that drive is gone forever? So first and foremost, if you remember nothing else from this podcast episode, I just want to say I do not believe that these desires that you are feeling now are infinite. So if you're feeling a desire for rest, for recovery, for some softness as you kind of like turn the ship in a slightly different direction, I am confident in my bones that that is not forever. I'm not here to say that everyone is always able to take as much time for rest and recovery as they could ever desire. I'm going to talk more about that in the next couple points. But I do want to say, I know because I've seen in my own life experience, I've seen it over and over with my clients, if you are desiring slowing down in a way that that does feel at odds with maybe sort of your long-term financial goals, even if you choose to let yourself follow that desire in this season of your life, I do not think it will last forever. Ambition, drive, a genuine motivation to achieve your goals, they will return. They will. I feel very confident in this. And they will return faster, typically, the more you lean into where whatever your authentic needs are right now. So that's the first thing I want to say heart to heart. I do not believe that your desires are endless. Okay. The second thing I want to tell you, it's also very important, and it's 
tricky to communicate precisely. So that thing is, I want to urge you to separate what's actually true from what your brain is telling you. I want you to separate what's actually true from what your brain is telling you, especially on the financial side, because that sounds like where a lot of your anxieties are. So let me say more about that. It sounds like you have a lot of thoughts in your brain about money. You're ha- you said you're having thoughts like, am I going to be able to look after myself in this financial climate? You didn't say explicitly, but it sounds like there's something like, you know, I'm worried that if I let myself shift directions and rest a little bit, I won't be making good decisions for my financial future. You know, there's sort of the implication here that these things are in opposition. Like, you know, if I if I let myself shift directions, if I left myself rest, it's at odds with making good decisions for my financial future. But if you were my client... I would push you to actually sit with, you know, is it really true that listening to my needs now in this particular season will mean that in the long term of my life, I will not be able to look after myself financially? I don't know the answer to that question. And everybody's bank account looks a little different, of course. But I will say that I hear from many, many folks, clients and otherwise, who at first tell me they absolutely cannot spend money on X, whatever X is. Often, it is a bit of time to rest, time between jobs or perhaps permission to work a little bit less than full time for a certain season of life. Sometimes it's something that would make their lives a little easier, like a babysitter on the weekends or someone to help them with some cooking for their family. And I hear from many, many people who start off with these very strong stories about they they cannot possibly spend this money. Absolutely, they cannot. It would be wildly financially irresponsible. In fact, they'd be terrible people if they did this. And then over the course of, you know, one or two or three coaching sessions, they come to have a different thought. They come to have a thought, often it's something along the lines of like, look, I need to get past this season. This season is often one in which they are, you know, exhausted or overwhelmed. And they come to have a belief, which is like, I'm willing to pay a little bit of money to get past this season, to support myself in this season, to get to a season when I have some ambition and motivation and drive again. And again, I don't want to be tone deaf here. It's not possible for every single person in the world to take a little bit of time off work or work a little bit less than part-time or whatever it is. And I don't know your exact financial situation. But in my experience, for many people, it is possible in one way or another. Sometimes some creativity is required. And sometimes they can't afford everything that they would possibly want, but they can't af- they can't afford something that would be quite helpful and supportive to them. And for most people, it does require noticing that all these thoughts that their brain was flooded with immediately about how whatever they desire is wildly financially irresponsible or whatever, those are not facts. Those are just thoughts. Sometimes, like I said, my clients start to have new thoughts and we often build those new thoughts together, you know, and one of those thoughts, as I said, might be something along the lines of like, what if the best way to care for your financial future is to attend to rest or falling apart or shifting direction or whatever else you need right now? What if the best thing that you can do, again, for your financial future financially is to metabolize this season as fast as you can by leaning into what you most need right now, rather than running away from it, rather than telling yourself, I'm not thinking as much enough about the future. So that's what I mean when I say to try to separate what's actually true from what your brain is telling you. Of course, the future matters. I I definitely want you to make good decisions for the future. But also, there are some seasons of our lives I don't know exactly which one you're in right now, but there are some seasons of our lives for some of us where the best thing for our future is to care for ourselves with so much gentleness, with so much love in the present. And I I can't help but wonder in reading your question if that's the kind of season you are in now. And if you need to make sure that your brain isn't feeding you something about how you won't possibly be able to take care of yourself in the future in this financial climate or you can't make possible good decisions in the future if you take a little bit of time to like regroup and shift careers or whatever it is that you're kind of really needing. So that leads to my third and final invitation or reminder for you. My third reminder for you is your priorities will evolve. Your priorities will revolve will evolve. Just like I know in my bones that your desires are not infinite, I know in my bones that your desires and priorities will evolve. 
I suspect that there will be a period where, yes, you feel a little bit less ambitious and you're recovering from that burnout and survival mode and grief and you just don't feel as interested in in perhaps a certain kind of financial ambition. I think eventually your appetite for that will reemerge. I'm not saying it will be exactly the same as it was in your 20s. Maybe there has been like a fundamental shift after all that you've been through, after just living life and aging. But I do feel confident that it will be more than it is now. I say that because, frankly, I've had this happen to me multiple times. I have gotten slammed around by life a little bit, sometimes just like burnt out at a job and sometimes very overwhelmed and turned around by some tough life circumstances. And frankly, in those seasons, I tend to lose my ambition for the future. I just <laughs> I just don't care that much about bigger goals. And when I rest and I regroup and I do my best with, yeah, being a little more present oriented, like clockwork, it comes back. And I have seen the same happen again and again and again with my clients. And on another personal note, it's literally happening kind of right now with my husband. My husband is in his season right now. He just left a job where he had been for five years. And he's kind of in that moment of transition. He's resting. He's pursuing some hobbies a bit more. Yes, he is applying to jobs, of course, but he's not like intensely motivated all the time to find something new. And I have seen him go through this season before over the course of our relationship. We've been together for almost 12 years. I I have seen this happen before and I know what's happening. He's going to prioritize rest for a few weeks or a few months. And then one day he's going to pick up his head and he's going to get really, really motivated to find something new. And his motivation, his ambition, they will come back in this palpable way that both he and I can sense. I have this confidence because I've seen it happen before. And when that happens for me or my clients or my husband, typically it's not that we're like 100% done resting. We could probably still rest some more, but it's that our what's actually happened is that we want that new job or that feeling of financial security or whatever it is more than we want rest. But the overall point is that our priorities do and will evolve. And the fastest way to have them evolve, in my opinion, is to lean into what's true now. So that closes out the podcast. Camilla, I I hope this was helpful for you. I think it is like a loving reminder that I would want if I was in your shoes for the really tough season that you're going through. And I I am so glad you asked the question because I am sure there are many other people who are balancing this really tricky question of current versus future needs and especially the financial implications of that. And our finances, we want them to be totally unemotional. (laughs) Like it's just like a a very hyper rational thing. But uh, our, our relationship with money also has a lot to do with our emotions as well. And so sort of untangling all of that can be so useful. So anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. I I want you to know that I'm rooting for you so much and I'm rooting for everybody listening to this. Have a good one, everyone. Talk to you soon. If you really want to change in a meaningful, lasting way, that's when you need a life coach. Every client I've worked with has had incredibly personalized reasons why they're in the tired or anxious or stuck or uninspired state they're in. Working with me can help you identify those roadblocks, which are usually blind spots that you genuinely cannot see, and implement a profoundly customized, doable plan for overcoming them. I have a very small, high-end, one-on-one coaching practice. If you'd like to be my next client, reach out at kdsever.com. I'd love to meet you.